I've been running the Backyard Solar Project for over a year. Let's take a look at what has changed, what's working, and what turned out differently than I had expected. The system began with four 200-watt solar panels attached to a very simple mount connected to my existing fence. This mount has proven to be very sturdy and hasn't moved a bit. The panel's sun angle isn't perfectly ideal, as it is positioned more west than south, but it's out of the way in the yard and was easy to attach to the existing posts. Since installation, I've upgraded to three 310 watt panels. I had to adjust the crossbars to fit these larger panels, but overall, it wasn't a difficult process. I also have a fourth 310 watt panel that I created a temporary stand. If I need any additional sun production, such as in a longer term emergency power outage, I can add this extra panel to the system. I've also created stands for the old 200 watt panels. Again, these stands are temporary and I would store them away overnight and I wouldn't set them up if there were high winds forecasted. Initially, I started off with a three kilowatt hour battery pack and a 3000 watt inverter. As I discussed in another video, this inverter was overkill for my usage. Since then, I stepped down to a power station that is more efficient for my day-to-day -day needs. The new station has a 2400 watt output and a built-in 2 kilowatt hour battery pack. It is connected to my original 3 kilowatt hour battery and a second external battery that adds about 3 more kilowatt hours. This brings my total battery capacity to around 8 kilowatt hours. As a refresher, this is an off-grid system, which means that it is not connected to my main electrical panel. The system itself has been running without any major issue. I've had my refrigerator and cable modem connected to it 24-7 for months at a time, running on 100% solar. Taking October and November 2024 as an example, I used an average of 750 watt-hours of energy per day. The solar panels produced an average of 1100 watt hours daily. In that two month time period, I generated more electricity than I used. My highest solar production day generated 2.1 kilowatt hours. However, the panels would have actually produced more than that. But once the batteries hit 100% charge, the system stops storing the solar energy. In mid December, we saw a significant decline in sunshine per day, and I did have to plug the system into the house AC power supply. During this time, I set the unit to charge the batteries off of solar power and only use the grid if the state of charge drops below 30%. By the end of January, there is enough sun again, and I have been generally able to stay above 30% charge just using solar. Based on past performance, I anticipate that from February through November, the system will continue to generate enough energy to cover my refrigerator and cable modem 99% of the time, and always be available as a backup power source for the rest of my home during small power outages. The first thing I have learned is how convenient it is to have an always on backup power supply. One morning, right before heading to the airport for a flight, the power went off. I was able to monitor the system remotely via the app and knew immediately when grid power was restored to the house. We didn't have to worry about unloading the groceries from our fridge, and we knew that critical items in our house were powered while we were away. The second thing that I have learned is that unless you are grid tied, it's difficult to utilize all the solar power that your panels can produce. As I mentioned earlier, in an off-grid solar system, once you hit 100% charge in your batteries, your panels are often underutilized. I found that once I hit 100% charge, it was a great time to plug in additional items, like charging up my power tool batteries or using a small space heater. All of that just to use up some of the extra sunshine. The final thing I learned is how easy it is to forget that the system is even there. Because it is completely silent and always on, you can take it for granted. 
I would sometimes go weeks without checking the app or state of charge of the system. This could backfire if you got a string of cloudy days and weren't plugged into the house for backup. Luckily, for my system, the app will send an alert if the state of charge drops to 10% or lower. Well, that's all the update I have for now. As always, thanks for watching, and a special thanks to those of you who have subscribed. With that said, I'll see you next time.